Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about Hyperemesis Gravidarum. This is a concise presentation for medical students. Now let us break the term Hyperemesis Gravidarum. Hyper means increased, emesis means vomiting and Gravidarum means relating to pregnancy. So, Hyperemesis Gravidarum literally means increased vomiting during pregnancy. Now let us see about vomiting in pregnancy in general. Remember, nausea and vomiting are common symptoms of early pregnancy. They occur in about 70% of all pregnant women. Nausea and vomiting will be at its peak during 8 to 12 weeks of gestation and it usually results by around 20 weeks. Now let us see about hyperemesis gravidarum. It is a severe type of vomiting of pregnancy with deleterious effect on the health of mother or which incapacitates her in her day-to-day -day activities. To be clear, hyperemesis gravidarum is a severe and intractable form of nausea and vomiting of pregnancy resulting in dehydration, weight loss, nutritional deficiencies and abnormal electrolyte and acid-base balance. Now let us see about the incidence of hyperemesis gravidarum. The incidence of hyperemesis gravidarum has decreased in the recent years. Nowadays, around 1 in 1000 pregnant women are diagnosed with hyperemesis gravidarum. This picture depicts a woman with hyperemesis gravidarum. Now let us see about the etiology of hyperemesis gravidarum. Human chorionic gonadotropin is implicated in vomiting during pregnancy. This is because vomiting peaks during 8 to 12 weeks. If you see the levels of HCG, the levels of HCG will be at their peak during 8 to 12 weeks. Also, HCG is increased in case of molar and multiple pregnancies. In these conditions, vomiting is also increased. Hyperemesis gravidarum is thought to be genetic. This is because the mother of a patient with hyperemesis gravidarum also gives a history of hyperemesis gravidarum in most cases. The sister of a patient with hyperemesis gravidarum can also suffer from hyperemesis gravidarum. Women younger than 30 years are more prone to develop severe vomiting. Associated medical conditions like migraine and motion sickness also makes the patient more prone to develop severe vomiting. Psychogenic factors play a major role in hyperemesis gravidarum. This theory has been substantiated by the fact that women improve when removed from their surroundings. Other theories for hyperemesis gravidarum include dietic deficiency, allergic or immunologic basis, H. pylori infection and decreased gastric motility. Now let us see about the symptoms of hyperemesis gravidarum. The clinical course of hyperemesis gravidarum can be divided into early hyperemesis gravidarum and late hyperemesis gravidarum. In early hyperemesis gravidarum, there is no evidence of dehydration or starvation. Late hyperemesis gravidarum can be divided into moderate and severe. In late hyperemesis gravidarum, there is evidence of dehydration or starvation. The common symptoms include excessive vomiting, oliguria or decreased urine output, epigastric pain and other symptoms of complications. We will be seeing about the complications in detail in the upcoming slides. What are the signs of hyperemesis gravidarum? Remember, in order to diagnose a patient as hyperemesis gravidarum, you need to first confirm pregnancy. So, there will be signs of pregnancy. The signs of pregnancy can be elicited by physical examination, mainly vaginal examination. There will be other signs of dehydration and ketoacidosis. These include sunken eyes, dry coated tongue, loss of skin turgor, tachycardia, hypotension, breath with ketotic odor and ictrus. Ictrus will be present in severe cases when the liver is affected. 
Also remember there can be tenderness in the epigastrium in hyperemesis gravidarum. Now let us see about the complications of hyperemesis gravidarum. There can be neurologic complications like Wernicke's encephalopathy which is due to deficiency of thiamine. In this there will be insomnia, convulsions or the patient can go into coma. There can be Korsakoff psychosis. In this there will be mental confusion with amnesia for recent events. Another neurologic complication of hyperemesis gravidarum is peripheral neuritis. Let us see about the other complications of hyperemesis gravidarum. There can be Mallory Weiss syndrome or esophageal tear, renal failure, jaundice and hepatic failure and hypoprothrombinemia due to the deficiency of vitamin K. Now let us see about the differential diagnosis of hyperemesis gravidarum. Remember hyperemesis gravidarum should be differentiated from other causes of vomiting like acute appendicitis, acute cholecystitis, hepatitis, urinary tract infection and pseudotumor cerebri. Now what are the investigations that you will do for a patient with hyperemesis gravidarum? Urine analysis is very important. You look for the quantity, color, specific gravity and presence of acetone, protein and bile pigments in the urine. Usually in hyperemesis gravidarum, the quantity will be reduced, the urine will be dark in color and the specific gravity will be increased and there will be presence of acetone, protein and bile pigments. Other investigations include serum electrolytes like sodium, potassium and chlorine. Ophthalmoscopic examination should be done. That is fundus examination should be done for retinal hemorrhage or detachment. ECG should be taken. ECG can reveal hypokalemia. USG should be done to confirm single or multiple pregnancy or molar pregnancy. Thyroid function test should be done because in hyperemesis gravidarum there can be transient thyroid dysfunction. Other biochemical tests include blood urea, serum creatinine, liver function tests, etc. Now coming to the management of hyperemesis gravidarum. The principles of management includes maintenance of hydration, control of vomiting, correction of fluid and electrolyte imbalance, correction of metabolic disturbances, prevention of serious complications and care of pregnancy. Now let us see about the management in detail. Reassurance should be given to the patient. The patient should be given small, frequent and easily digestible meals. Usually the patient is admitted and IV fluids are started. Approximately 3 liters of fluid should be given. Half of it should be 5% dextrose and the other half should be Ringer solution. Crystallites can be given to the patient. Electrolytes should be administered to the patient according to the serum levels. Pyridoxin and thiamine can be administered to the patient. The patient can be given internal nutrition through nasogastric tube. Antiemetics useful in hyperemesis gravidarum are promethazine, prochlorperazine, doxylamine and metoclopramide. Corticosteroids like hydrocortisone can be given. An hyperemesis progress chart should be maintained. Nursing of a patient with hyperemesis gravidarum should be sympathetic but with firm handling. Termination of pregnancy is indicated in intractable hyperemesis gravidarum in spite of therapy. This is very rare nowadays and termination will not be required in most of the cases. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe and tell your friends about this channel. Thank you.